What's up everyone? Today we are in York, Nebraska, Nathan and I, and we are going to get a tour of the uh, York Research and Development Center um, from Corteva and Pioneer. And so we're going to get to talk to some uh, corn breeders and some uh, researchers, and so uh, hopefully we get to learn a little bit more about the uh, corn we planted. Looks like we're here. So we are here at the Chrome uh, test plot, um, testing several different of their numbers they have. Uh, this 1828Q is what we actually, the same uh, variety that we have planted on our farm. Um, and we also have one other one, 1244Q. And um, so it looks really good. I think it's taller here than ours is. So yeah. Can you, can you believe that? The Test center has taller corn. Yeah. So, so I'm Brandon Wardine. I'm a corn breeder here in York, Nebraska for Pioneer. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about chrome, some of the Pioneer hybrids we have with it. So tell us a little bit about what chrome is. So chrome's a unique proprietary GMO stack that enables hybrids to be resistant to corn rootworm. Some of the benefits of chrome, you know, in the past few years, you know, the yield advantage, you know, well over eight bushels an acre yield advantage versus same technology from competitors. Um, what I like about Chrome is we get industry leading rootworm protection with it. So I feel safe. A lot of beetles are flying this year. I feel safe knowing we have the rootworm protection out there. The other thing as a corn breeder, how I really like, what I really like about Chrome is it really opens up the germplasm base to rootworm technology. Right. Right. It helps with corn on corn rotation as well? Yep, corn on corn rotation, that's going to be the typical situation where we run into rootworm pressure. And so like around here, around York, there's a lot of corn on corn acres. And chrome is a very popular choice for those acres to protect against rootworm. All right, so right here we're in a, what we call an efficacy trial. So here we're just, we're, this is where we ask the question, how does chrome stand up to rootworm pressure? And so what we do in this field here is we actually infest it with rootworm eggs, a lot of them. It's essentially a machine that just injects eggs down the row. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of eggs. And cool. so what we're trying to create is just a, the, one of the worst like rootworm infestations that a customer would see is what we're trying to recreate. Um, this year we had really good, really good take is what we say. So in this field we'll have non-treated checks, which is what you're looking at right here, which what this means is no insecticide, no rootworm control. Um, and then also we'll have different types of rootworm. So chrome is in here. Chrome came out of this. We've been working with chrome in research for you know, well over seven years, you know, probably longer in other parts of research, but I've been a part of it for probably seven years. And you can see when you have heavy feeding, this is what it looks like. And we talked about the root strength. And you can go ahead and you can just pull on one of these if you want. If you want to pull on it. It's so easy it comes out. When they come out pretty easy. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. But one of the big benefits of chrome is it really allows us to protect some of the root strength we breed into these hybrids. You know, it's uh, genetically they can have really good roots, but like in this case right here, if the rootworms get in there and just really decimate the root mass, the wind comes up, it doesn't stand a chance. You know, so these are untreated checks. You know, and back there you can see some, you know, chrome style hybrids back there. They're standing really well. Yeah, so for us on our farm, we we have, in Kansas, we have tight clay where we're at, and then we get short on water a lot of times, and we can have wind, and roots are the biggest thing for us to have good, strong roots to fight all of those things, so that's why we want to protect our roots, right? Yep, yeah, and if it gets if it's dry out, it even makes it worse because you'll get restricted root, root growth, so instead of a big root mass, you have a smaller root mass, and I mean, hard to get a comb this in the combine head, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Much less. You want to stand nice and much, straight. Much less stressful if it's standing straight yep. like a yeah. fence row, right? Absolutely. So in that last clip, you saw the untreated check. Um, that corn there um, didn't have any protection against rootworm. Uh, this was exposed to the same, um, and it is the the chrome, uh, so it has protection and it's standing a lot better. You can just you can just tell the difference. Um, it's not gonna not going to pull out, not going to break. So uh, you can just, you can see the difference between the two. At the end of the season, they'll be able to harvest all of these separately and see um, what the yield difference is between all their checks, whether it's uh, the chrome treatment versus other treatment. 
um, versus even the untreated check, which should be the worst. Okay, so we're out here in the middle of the whole plot. Now, what are we looking at here? So here's, here's where the fun happens. So again, we're in this, this is the rootworm efficacy trials, the fancy word for it. And so what we, what we do in here is you see these, this path here, we've actually came in here and we've actually dug the roots out. So there used to be plants here with roots, but we've actually dug them out, hold them back to the building to wash them off and score them. So then you have that data, even with like yield data from later, that data is maybe more for in season knowing what's going on. Yep. Yeah, so we'll have the, the rootworm data, the, the damage data, the yield data, and then all the agronomic data, the root scores, the stock scores, all the other things you know, outside of rootworm, we'll have all that data as well. But this plot right here, what we're after right here for these five or six plants we dug was, was there any rootworm feeding? If there was, how much feeding was there? So what did uh, we do before we had chrome? What were the options uh, before chrome came around? So before we had chrome, we had other rootworm technologies, what I would call older rootworm technologies. Um, and, and they killed rot rootworm, but one of the biggest issues we had as a corn breeder, like I work with genetics, right? So the biggest issue I had with the older rootworm genetic, or rot rootworm events, we call them, rot rootworm genes, is that they didn't work with some genetics. Right. So we might bring a great hybrid through and it might be the perfect hybrid, you know, for your farm. But it wouldn't fit. But it wouldn't fit with rootworm genetics. So the rootworm genetics, the rootworm gene just had a bad interaction with those genetics. So I, the analogy I, I use is sometimes, you know, you're allergic to something. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out a lot of the corn genetics were allergic in, in a way to yeah. some of those old genes. So is, is chrome more compatible then in that sense? Yeah, chrome's much more compatible. And so what it allows us to do is really deliver the genetics that customers need on their farms. We have them in our pipeline and as a corn breeder, I know it's coming through I'm almost certain it's going to work with Chrome. And we can deliver those genetics, and that that certainty comes from all this research and development, essentially. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've got a number of years of research going into it, and by the time we put a commercial number on it, I mean, we're certain yeah. that it works. It's a good confidence. Yep. So here we have some side by side comparisons of the same number, um, but with Chrome package and without. Um, because of the flexibility that Chrome has to, to go with um, any number, if I'm explaining that right. So what are, what are we seeing here? Yeah, so right here, right here what we have, we have two, two different versions. We call them a 1244, which you guys plan. So this would be the AM version, which has above ground insect control. So no, no effect on rootworm versus the Chrome, which has above ground and below ground insect control. So this has rootworm protection. So you can see the strength of the roots here compared to that. And this is test with, I mean, this is like, this is with um, your event. Yeah, these yeah. are both under very, he very heavy infestation. Yeah. Very heavy. Both 1244 and then this year we did a 1244 chrome package. And so this can be planted on our farm in Kansas. And um, we know that if we need that um, chrome package and need that help we know we can get it on that number that we've planted in the past that we liked we can put that chrome on there uh, when we need it yep yeah i know earlier really, you know we talked about root strength and you can see I mean, this is a really good example of you know as we breed root strength into hybrids you know if you want to protect that root strength you know the difference between these two if a windstorm came through is going to be pretty dramatic and we get windstorms in kansas right Nathan? yes we know when. <laughs> so how do you score these and kind of what are you looking for uh, when you score them? Obviously when we, we go to score these, we use a potato fork, we dig them up, we power, off, power wash off the roots. There's a protocol that we have in place. Um, so for instance, I'll start with the check. What we do is, first thing we look at, how's the root health? Okay, what does it look damaged? You know, a healthy root is gonna be white like this, but a damaged root is gonna have that brown, pruned look to it. Okay, so obviously there's some sort of pressure there. After that, we break down these brace roots so we can get down to the nodes that actually are underground that we'll see that feeding. So what we do is we major any any root that has more than an inch and a half feeding on it, that's considered damage, so we count that. So I will go around, count the, no the roots on this node, that entire node, has been fed on. So I'd give that, so that's, 
in a calculation of a scoring, that's one. So I'll count, it's a zero to three score. It's starting off at one. This next node, I'll count around six. Okay, there's six roots on that node. Looks like there's one, one damage. So that's a one of six. Six roots on the node with one damaged. That's a 0.17. So, so far I'm up to 1.17. And then that last, that third node, I don't see any damage, so I give it a zero. So this root would score a 1.17. Okay, so on something that's a chrome, you can obviously tell the root mass is yeah. much healthier, much yeah. more dense. It's going to stand up to your wind. It's the same thing. But you're going to put an actual number to that so you can really quantify it. Correct, correct. So there's very little, there is some pruning here, but there will be pruning on most everything, especially when we infest it so heavily. Mm -hmm. We'll break off these brace roots, we'll get in there and look at it, and you can just tell the difference between a chrome yeah. and a non-treated non check. Chrome versus non, a 1.17 and a 0 0.09. So that's the beauty of chrome, is we got better root strength coming out of 1244. With the old technology AMXT, while it was good, it protected us against root, against root worm. We, wouldn't, we couldn't offer the 1244 with AMXT. So now with Chrome, the new technology, we can offer this to the customer. So you're getting both the strength against the rootworm and just better root structure in general. Yep. Yeah, so that's why it's a win-win. You still get the same level of excellent rootworm protection, but just there's better agronomics and better yields with different genetics. So I've been, I've been breeding corn out here for about 15 years. I've seen a lot of technologies come and go, a lot of genetics come and go, but I can honestly say chrome has been the best thing for me as a corn breeder in my career. For the last 15 years, chrome has been the biggest development, just in terms of making my job easier and allowing me to really operate and help the growers. And so as a farmer, we like to hear that because, I mean, essentially what's good for you is good for us, right? Uh, whether, because of the flexibility of uh, us choosing what to plant. You know, we've got more flexibility as being a corn breeder, you know, for Pioneer and being able to deliver a more diverse set of products. You guys have more choices to really customize what you want to grow. Yeah, so then when, um, you know, we're not talking to the scientists, but by the time um, we're talking with our sales rep, the sales rep is trained to um, choose what fits best for our farm and um, when they have the options of what fits best for our farm, um, then that can um, translate to us. And that's always good as a farmer to have um, more better options. Well, it's been really cool just to kind of learn about the foundation of um, the seed that we plant on our farm. And uh, you know, when it comes to farming, uh, the foundation of farming is the seeds that you plant and the foundation of the, the plants um, is are the roots you know that's kind of what holds it in place and uh, protects it from different things and so uh, just really learning about the roots of uh, what we're growing on our farm here at this research and development plant uh, so guys like Brandon and Matt are working locally here and uh, their their end spot is um, the plant behind us where that seed is getting bagged that they've worked on um, the from the very beginning stages developing here um, hybrids like 1244 and 1828 and uh, for that for us that's the beginning we get a bag of seed um, either 1244 or 1828 and um, then we get to see um, you know the the fruit of their labor from all their research and we're really appreciative of that as farmers that we can rely on um, the that seed that we are getting in the bag um, and it's just the start for us and we get to see how it grows throughout the season so shout out to the Pioneer team uh, here in York, Nebraska for giving us a tour. Uh, we learned a lot and uh, hoping that we can take that knowledge back to our farm and, and not only be more appreciative of, of where um, our corn seed comes from, um, but just kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on. So as we enter into 2021 as farmers, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknowns, um, the markets, um, the economy, the weather. Um, but it's good to know that here on, on research farms, uh, like here in York, Nebraska, um, there's a lot of work going into the seeds uh, that we're planting um, and there's a lot of known information and a good foundation and so that's something that, uh, that we're definitely thankful for. So I hope you enjoyed the tour, hope you enjoyed the video and learned some things about Chrome. Thanks for watching.